In our Spotlight on Business report, state lawmakers are cracking open New Jersey's nearly century-old liquor license laws, considering a number of bills today that will reform the system, which currently caps the number of licenses issued to each town based on population, has enabled other licenses to be left dormant for years, and advocates say has stifled the ability of the industry to grow. Melissa Rose Cooper reports from the State House. At the end of the day, we're looking to create vibrant uh, destination, you know, live, work, play communities in the right areas of the state. And so at the end of the day, this is about where we're going to grow as a state. Jeff Kolakowski of the New Jersey Builders Association addressing legislation that would allow municipalities to transfer inactive liquor licenses for use in redevelopment areas. The measure is one of a number of bills aimed at reforming the state's liquor license laws being reviewed by the Assembly Oversight Reform and Federal Relations Committee. My priority here was to do something about these licenses that weren't being used. Uh, the fact that they exist in the market disrupts the market. The, the fact that they're, they're, they go for so many years um, where this license to do business is being halted. The issue has also become a priority of Governor Murphy announcing plans during his State of the State address to make liquor licenses more available. Right now, towns are only allowed one license for every 3,000 residents. As a mayor of a small community of 2,700 residents, I have one liquor license in town, and it's a historic liquor license. If that business goes out, I don't get to keep that license. Our communities, and there are a number of them that, that are like mine, having any sort of a population cap, and I was the mayor who said I could have 15 cannabis licenses, but one liquor license. I don't know why we have this double standard in this state when it comes to these two sin products that again, one we treat like it's almost nuclear waste, and the other one that we're welcoming and realizing the economic growth potential that it has. We are restricting growth in communities that are welcoming it. These communities want to be destination downtowns. They're welcoming this, and we have this one little thing that is stopping us from being able to accommodate growth in the places that want it and where it makes most sense. The high cost of getting a liquor license also of concern for members of the industry. One or two additional licenses in a high demand community will still sell at the prevailing price. Releasing a small number of licenses will provide no opportunity for those with limited means to get into the game when the price going price is a half a million to well over a million in these communities. Another bill up for discussion would allow food and beverage businesses inside shopping malls to sell alcoholic drinks, which some say creates issues of public safety, like an adult being able to pass off drinks to underage residents. There's no way to adequately enforce uh, pass offs uh, in an unrestricted, uh, unregulated area such as a food court. Um, the same goes for overconsumption. Uh, there's really a very uh, difficult to tell who is overconsuming uh, when they go to a food court and they can go to perhaps six or seven or eight different kiosks uh, in that food court. They get you know their first 16 ounce draft at Sabaro and then they get their next one at uh, Annie's Pretzels and then they get their next one at, uh, you know, a Burger King. The bill to allow towns to sell unused licenses did pass out of committee today. Advocates for reform say while that's a great first step to improving access for businesses, many want more new licenses. But the bill to relax the population cap on liquor licenses was just up for discussion today with no vote scheduled and faces an uncertain path forward. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper.